Imagine opening your compost bin one morning only to find dozens of worms crawling up the sides or worse, trying to escape the lid. It's a shocking sight. These creatures you've worked so hard to keep comfortable and productive are literally fleeing their home. And here's the thing, when worms leave a compost pile, they're not being dramatic. They're warning you, loudly, and the message is clear, we can't survive here anymore. Worms are nature's most honest compost critics, they don't fake it. If your bin is too acidic, too dry, too wet, too hot, or too unbalanced in nutrients, they'll either die off quietly or wriggle out in desperation. Either way, you lose the most important workforce in your compost system. But here's the good news. Once you understand what's making your worms bolt, fixing it becomes surprisingly easy. So, if you've seen your compost worms trying to escape or noticed they're vanishing altogether, it's time to look at what's really going wrong beneath the surface. Let's dig deep into the five key conditions that cause worm exodus, and the habits you must stop now if you want to keep your compost alive, healthy, and wriggling with life. It's tempting to dump every kitchen scrap into the compost and expect magic to happen. But overfeeding, especially with rich, wet, or sugary foods, can turn your worm bin into a sour, toxic stew. As those scraps break down, they release ammonia, heat, and acids that irritate and burn your worm's sensitive skin. What's worse, uneaten food starts to rot anaerobically when it piles up faster than the worms can eat. That's when foul odors kick in and pathogens thrive, both red flags that scream danger zone to your composting crew. A sudden worm exodus after adding a large load of fruit scraps, bread, or cooked leftovers is a strong sign of nutrient overload. To stop this, pull back, feed less and observe. A healthy worm system should process food gradually, never leaving scraps to rot for days, and always mix food with bedding to balance moisture and aeration. If it smells like vinegar, ammonia, or garbage, it's already too late unless you act fast. Excess moisture might be the single most common mistake in worm composting. Moisture is necessary, yes, but too much turns bedding into sludge, robs the bin of oxygen, and suffocates your worms. If your compost feels soggy or leaves water dripping from your fingers when squeezed, it's already in trouble. In waterlogged bins, worms either drown or escape in search of breathable air. And even if they survive, excess moisture fosters mold, fermentation, and pest invasions. The solution is simpler than you think. Stop adding wet scraps without balancing them with dry bedding like shredded cardboard, leaves, or paper. Also, check your drainage. If your bin lacks air holes or doesn't drain properly, you're trapping every drop of moisture inside and turning your compost into a worm graveyard. Remember, worms breathe through their skin. If they can't get air, they will leave. Hey! Have you ever added a large amount of citrus onions or like spicy food waste into just one section of your bin? If so, you might have actually created a localized acid zone. Worms can't escape quickly enough from these pockets, and honestly, the acidic environment literally burns them alive. Likewise, fresh manure grass clippings or coffee grounds in large amounts can heat up really rapidly as they break down. Composting naturally generates heat, but worm bins actually operate best under cool conditions, between 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 15 to 27 degrees Celsius. Anything higher, especially in a closed bin, becomes lethal. So, stop adding anything in large amounts without balancing it, mix new material well, and avoid high acid or high nitrogen inputs unless they're diluted with carbon-rich bedding. When worms cluster tightly in corners or even flee altogether, it's often due to pH or temperature spikes in just one spot. Compost worms aren't just eating food scraps, they also need bedding to live in. Bedding acts as both habitat and buffer, soaking up moisture, absorbing acids, and keeping airflow moving. But here's the part many gardeners miss. Bedding breaks down too, just like food. Over time, if you're not replenishing bedding, your bin becomes one solid block of decomposing material, dense, sticky, and suffocating. Worms have nowhere soft or safe to retreat. They start to panic, cluster, or disappear entirely. 
So if your bin has turned dark and compact without visible bits of paper or cardboard, it's starving for structure. Add shredded brown materials immediately. This is one of the fastest ways to rescue a dying bin and convince your worms to stay. Sometimes the problem isn't visible at all. If your bin suddenly goes quiet after adding something new, whether it's a batch of grass clippings, a handful of bread, or even cardboard, it could be due to chemical contamination. Many store-bought or treated materials contain pesticide residues, antibacterial agents, or synthetic fragrances. Even certain cardboard boxes, especially colored or glossy ones, can leach toxins that kill off beneficial microbes and harm worms. The solution? Always use untreated, plain brown cardboard and paper. Avoid any food scraps that may have been sprayed or come from questionable sources. And never add anything you wouldn't feel safe touching with bare hands. Composting is a biological process and toxic inputs kill biology. If your worms are escaping, don't ignore it. They're sending an urgent message that your compost is becoming uninhabitable. But the good news is this. Worm bins are incredibly resilient once you understand what they need. Stop the overfeeding. Dry out the soggy mess. Rebuild the bedding. Keep your ingredients clean and balanced. With just a few adjustments, your compost bin can go from dying to thriving. Full of happy, hungry worms doing the work nature designed them for. At Hydrohaven, we believe your compost should be alive, balanced, and absolutely bursting with biology. If your bin is quiet, still, or empty, it's time to intervene. And if your worms are escaping, they're not quitting. They're waiting for you to fix what's broken. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share this video with fellow gardeners who might be losing their worms without even knowing why. You never know who you'll help save a compost bin today. Keep your soil alive, and we'll see you in the next Hydro Haven Guide.